Well, hello, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott. Today is November the 18th. I don't know where the month is going. It's a Wednesday. We've got a lot to talk about. We've got retail sales. We've got housing starts. There's a lot to talk about. Let's get into it right now. Global stock market pushed higher on Wednesday after the release of more upbeat data. COVID-19 vaccines everywhere. Pfizer, BioNTech, traders have this month have been encouraged by announcements of progress towards possible vaccine. And on Wednesday, Pfizer said that the one is in development is even more effective than first announced. That's really, really good news. The statement comes as the company is preparing within days to formally ask regulators, U.S. regulators, to allow them to use it for emergency use. Now, for those of you who don't know, after the emergency use, what will happen is they'll divide people into specific groups higher risk group, low risk group, and so forth. My doctor said it'll be about six months. He knew about this. He told me on October 30th, when I had my annual checkup, that they're going to get uh, emergency approval about a month from now. It's like he, he predicted the future perfectly. And he said people with reasonably normal health will get it in about six months. So it's going to take some time unless you're older or have a pre-existing condition, so forth and so forth. On Tuesday, markets took a hit after new data, this is very, very important, show U.S. retail sales grew, fell. They were expecting, this is the report, we were looking at 0.4, we got 0.3. And according to the numbers, September was really, really good. But remember, stimulus checks, people haven't been getting a lot of money. And October didn't look so well. And it looks like the numbers are getting weaker going into New Year's, which is very, very negative for the stock market. Why? Because retail sales tend to report the last before the New Year's. And usually, if the retail sales numbers are good, the stock market tends to rally into New Year's. And if we don't see strong retail sales, that doesn't happen. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this year, both fingers and toes crossed, that we are going to have positive, better than expected sales for November. But that's not going to come till a month from now, and that's going to be already in December. So again, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the numbers for November will be good and we'll get that New Year's rally caused by retail sales. Remember folks, retail sales make up two thirds of the economy. Now on a different topic, look at, look at Lowe's and the same thing happened with Staples. Home builders are surging. Interest rates are gonna be near the lowest uh, levels in history for a quite foreseeable future. People are building homes, home builders, home builders, and more home builders. That's why home builder stocks have been rising very, very strong. Now, looking at the report, it's going to come out in about 10 minutes, the housing starts and permits. I'm expecting this report to be very, very solid. So I'm not expecting anything major here. The big surprise this week is gonna be on the jobless claims data. And again, existing home sales, I'm also expecting to be good. Here's the problem. The biggest problem is jobless claims and this retail, um, this retail sales number. The retail sales was getting better pretty quick and it was getting encouraging till September's numbers came out uh, yesterday. But, um, and now, and jobless claims. Jobless claims, the number went from like 1.1 million or like a million all the way to about 750,000. But then it's been sitting at 700,000, 750,000 for like six months now. So although we're below the, five, the four week moving average, the number is not low enough and it's not going fast enough lower. And that's a big, big issue because if people aren't working, they're not gonna be able to spend money. If they're not getting their aid, they're not gonna be able to spend money and so forth and so forth. Amongst the concerns for the investors, whether the economy will get more stimulus for obvious reasons that I just explained right now, because people are not working and the employment unemployment level is not dropping fast enough. In Europe, COVID-19 relief package is being held up by diplomatic dispute between Hungary and Poland. Go figure, Hungary and Poland. In the US, extra unemployment benefits that help to support consumer spending, that's what I was talking about September and August, that's the money that helped retail sales, have expired and progress on possible new aid plan in Congress is slow. And again, crude oil prices are getting a little bit higher, but we're still at that break even level, maybe a little bit below the price that frackers in America pay for development of energy, of starting to work with it. So again, we've got big numbers coming up tomorrow in jobless claims. We got big numbers coming out in housing starts and existing home sales. And again, I'm expecting existing home sales to be off the charts. I don't know if you guys have had the same experience in your neighborhoods, in your neck of the woods, but over here in North Florida, we have been going crazy. I mean, it has been going crazy. 
We've had seven homes sell on my block in the last three months. And it usually sells like, uh, usually tells, takes like eight months to sell a home here. This isn't Miami, this is Ponte Vedra Beach. And literally, we've been just going crazy here. I've talked to Jeff Zanineri, and he said the exactly the same thing's happening in South Florida. I know from talking to my friends, same thing is happening all over the country. So again, existing home sales, I would be shocked to find out that the number is slow. And housing starts and permit in light of what I'm seeing with Home Depot and all of the home builder stocks. Um, I'm not expecting a major negative surprise there. Jobless claims, I'd love to see the number fall below 650. Um, what were those? Let's see what the moving average is in the estimates. Yeah, I'd love the number to be about 650. This consensus is just, it's, it's, it's moving too slow. It's moving in the right direction, but it's moving too slow. And existing home sales, again, I'm expecting the number to be perfectly perfect like off the charts existing home sales have been soaring at a blistering pace which however has been drying up supply after september's much stronger than expected 6.5 million my god forecast for october is slowing but again even with the slowing the consensus i'm telling you look at this month over year number 9.4 percent look at the year over year number 20 percent that's existing home sales look at housing starts and permits that's why I'm really bullish on homes, smaller homes. Not all of real estate, just homes, not commercial real estate. Look at the start annual, the starts and the permits. The numbers have literally been going off the charts. Expectations for October are a sharp rise to 1.46 million. And I think they're gonna get it versus September's 1.415 million. Home builders, home builders, and home builders. Now, it's Wednesday, I wanna give you guys two stocks. I wanna give you a stock that's in the mid cap 400 and the stock that's in the Russell 2000. Why? Well, the mid caps and the Russells are smaller than the S&P 500. And those two indices have been lagging behind the S&P 500 for over a year now. And with Biden taking charge, they've been outperforming. Why? Smaller stocks do worse in um, economic global turmoils like trade war and Smaller companies do well with democratic governments because they tend to give support to smaller companies and regulate larger companies. That's one of the reasons why the NASDAQ has been cooling off and the S&P has been cooling off while industrial stocks like the Dow, uh, S&P 400, and the Russell have been up 6%, over 6% in the last month while the S&P is up only 2%. So again, it's like three times higher over the last 30 days and I'm expecting Folks, I've predicted this over a long time. No trade war equals more upside for smaller stocks and, and mid-cap stocks. So my mid-cap stock of the day, notice indice S&P 400. It is a prepackaged software company, but it's not a big, they don't have a, a lot of tech exposure. So human capital management software company provides human resources, payroll benefits, workforce management and task management functionality. These programs are really good for, for companies that are managing people who are working from home. We'll keep it between us. Yes, there's gonna be another spike in COVID. Without the spike in COVID, there's a record people working from home, um, even if this thing gets under control. So again, this company is doing really, really well. Um, the price is doing really, I like it's basing out. It made a 90 day high. Let's see if it's an all time high. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So the stock is trading near all-time highs. It pulled up for it pulled up for a full day, and then it had three down days, and now it's trading higher. I would buy it on a buy stop at 97. I would do it at about 98, and I would put a stop loss at 93.70, 93.50 level. And then Tupperware. I've been talking about this stock. It's a Russell 2000 stock. They create plastic uh, packaging for cooking, like microwaving, if you need to put something in the microwave. This company, excuse me, should be doing really well because of the stay-at-home pandemic. People are cooking and doing things more at home and going out less. And when they are doing that, they're using a stock like Tupperware, which is up like 12% yesterday. <laughs> and I, folks, I've called this stock when it was like down at 13, now it's at 35, and I'm still bullish on it. And it just made swing high. Um, I like this stock quite a bit. So again, uh, the profile, you've got miscellaneous consumer staples. Consumer staples are always doing good during questionable times. Um, my key is to get away from the technology, from the uh, large cap tech stocks right now, because they are up too much over the last year. And the Russell 2000 and the mid cap have to catch up. 
Tupperware is up 303% over the last year. And this stock is up, C-Day is up 71% over the last year. And I like both of them, these stocks. They don't have a lot of exposure to the FANG stocks. Again, you've got C-Day, Ceridian Holdings, and right around here, and you got Tupperware. And I really like th these stocks. They're not exciting stocks. They're pretty boring, but they're resilient to the downside exposure or much of it that we're seeing right now. And also, take a look at home builder stocks. I gave you several a few months ago and told you they were going to rally, and I'm not, I'm not seeing an end to it. Now, folks, it's no secret that Main Street investors are fighting. They're fighting an uphill battle against Wall Street's automatic trading machines. And this has been going on for a long time. These supercomputers... These supercomputers, folks, can execute thousands of trades in a matter of seconds, triggering massive stock runs before you even have time to blink fast. I mean, like that. They can go through hundreds of thousands of lines of code during the same period that I read a sentence or say a word. I mean, it's scary fast. But they've had an unfair advantage. They've had an unfair advantage. This data... These algorithms, they've had it, but that unfair advantage, it ends today. Now you, you, the everyday guy, you have an opportunity to make the same lightning fast profits as the pros on Wall Street, thanks to a newly developed trading technology that we call Storm, S-T-O-R-M. You're going to learn all about it. With Storm, you'll discover which stocks to get into, precisely when to get out of them, and when to take profit, and when to take stop it, and when to take partial profit targets. It's all there. It's state of the art. It's my newest creation and it's my favorite way to trade. We've been seeing nothing but triple digit gains over the last few weeks and I'm expecting more. We cashed out, I think, 400% gain, like 50 times more than the S&P over the last year. The results have been just amazingly good and solid. With Storm, you'll discover which stocks to get in on, precisely when to get out of them, and it's all automated and I run the show. I love it. It's my favorite stack. It's my favorite engine. It's my favorite way to trade. Take all the emotions out of your trades and get the trades on time. Click on the link below and learn more. Do it now. You won't regret it. Have a great day and send me some feedback. Post some comments be below the articles. Give me some ideas you want answered. Ask some questions. I'm always there for you. Bye and have a great day.